the RUTX 50 first view and test results. Um, now I know this could be a long video so I'm just starting off with the results so you'll see at the bottom below me the um, actual results of all the tests that I've done is, is shown so you'll see what the, um, what the results are what I'm about to talk about and I'll explain in the video bit by bit what I've done what I've learned and what else I feel is to learn in the next year and stuff going forward. Um, I guess in essence, before you leave the video, what I want to say is, first of all, I think I learned Nighthawk is inferior to the RUTX 50. Um, yeah, keep watching to see why I say that. The other thing I also want to say is, one of I'll go through my notes here, um, definitely, this is actually the biggest thing, I don't know why I went to my notes. External antennas is just absolutely going to smash it. Now, um, what I have seen is consumer grade products always gets, um, gets asked, so a lot of questions. Consumer grade, I consider anything that gets um, provided by the network operator or something that has a lot of plastic. Often a lot of internal antennas and maybe the occasional external antenna to some of the antennas. The problem there is I have no control, you have no control over what you can do with the external antenna. So what you see is what you get. With a night talk you do get two external antennas, but there are four antennas in there. So you're already getting limited access to something that you want to do. On the Nokia Fastmall, which is the one I'm using on the Optus network in my tests, there are internal antennas that people have opened up and I have done it myself on another video on the membership portal um, to see what can be done and it's possible. but. If the design intent for a device, a router such as the RUTX50 is to use external antennas, that's what it's made for. It's going to work really well with a good external antenna or set of antennas. Now because it's 4x4, it's going to be 4x4. So let me show and share you the results here and um, see what we can get. I'm just going to get my glasses on. So first of all on the table, what I've done in this summer holiday basically is trying to get tests done here at home. I had a lot of trouble getting proper connections with the RUTX50, so my first impression was a little bit, oh dear, there's a problem. Then I learned, as I actually looked at this, that Telstra has pretty bad coverage here in, um, in this location, which is not something I'm used to because I'm actually not a, a, an official Telstra customer where I live. So I looked at the coverage maps and what you can see for where I live, comparison, comparing Optus to Telstra, we are in a hole for Telstra. So there's actually limited 4G coverage outside. It's fine, inside is pretty ordinary, um, but we don't actually have official 5G coverage here. So it makes it perfect for me when I start to do my like, external antenna test. But as you can see, that was the problem. So I did my test on the inside. The first test, well, I did a few tests, but let's go from left to right. So the first one was on my Nokia FastMark, which is by Optus. That's what I use inside. So I always assume 5G is fine because this device just works really well for us here at home. I can't use external antenna, so that is the negative, but I don't care as, a, as an end user because this is what I got from Optus. This is what I can work with and it works really well. You can see the setup there and you can see the test that I have was 395 down. 7 up. Now up is not incredible but that's okay for home use the 395 down was just like man that's fine I'm, I'm, this is good we can work with this really well no issues at all. The, um, the next device that I tested is actually the unit that we use in the workshop is the Telstra AW1000 or the Telstra solution 5G solution. Now at the workshop which is in Lonsdale again things are fine we don't have issues so I never realized that when I take the same Telstra solution bring it here I have a problem tested down 5, tested up 21.8. So up is actually much better than down. Shows you a few things I guess that, that okay is maybe not ideal but that's the result I got. I did get the question from customers can you swap the, the SIM card? So can I take the Optus SIM put it in the RUTX50? Can I take this Telstra SIM from the business plan put that in the RUTX50? Can't do it. Couldn't get it to work. So I'm not even going to go into detail here. That's something that the network operators look at, but you need to get a SIM card, a dedicated um, data SIM card with a plan and probably a 5G enabled to work on the RUTX50 and for you as a user to get the best out of the unit itself. Now, of course, then um, the next test that I do here at home is using the Nighthawk M6. Um, show you a pretty picture of the actual setup and then after that, error message on my download speed. So, that's a problem. Obviously, there's already showing a little bit of a um, problem on the quality of the sensitivity and stuff comparing the Night Talk to the Telstra AW1000. Not using the same SIM, I'm using my 
post plate data plan that I have that I use at work for the phone services um, and now is also used for one for between different devices and this is where this gets very important because first of all I had a problem with getting 5G Telstra working at home because of that I introduced the RUT950. Now the RUT950 to us is just this workhorse, it's just a really solid reliable and good little unit. We use it all the time and I tested it here as well. Taking into account how much st struggle I had with the Telstra AW1000, which is a 5G modem, the RUT950 got almost 10 down and 18 up. So it was actually performing really well with its uh, external antennas. On its antennas, you see this four. Four is two for 4G, two for Wi-Fi. And then of course the highlight for the day was actually when I turned on the um, RQT X50. I have to admit, in the early times during the sum, this whole summer holiday when I was testing, I could not get a proper 5G connection at home. Always got good 4G, so I always had a really good connection with the RQT X50. So the 4x4 MIMO for the cellular antennas works awesome. But when I did my test yesterday, I actually got a 5G connection as well, so it didn't say good enough for 4G, it said good enough for 4G and let's do 5G as well. I was really happy with that and as you can see the download speeds that I recorded, 353 down and 13.2 up. That's made me like ecstatic really because even comparing it to my home service which is the, no the Optus Nokia service, the um, Teltonica RUTX 50 made me really excited and then that's when I actually uploaded the quick shorts to say well this is working I'm getting really optimistic about what's lying ahead for us um, for the official test that I went to do this morning so this morning I took an early morning drive to Port Nolanga on close to Christie's Beach and if you could see on the coverage map Optus is um, questionable, not a great solution there, and Telstra is actually really good. So that was already a flip to what I have here at home. Um, again, whenever I do my my videos for for YouTube, there's there's two. Um, well, in Lonsdale, Optus and Telstra are great. So when I do my tests at work, it's never an issue. Now that I went to Port Nolonga, I could see there's actually a, a flip to what I have at home. That Optus is not so good. Telstra is really good, but at least that's that's for me a significant benefit because I have this Telstra sim that I can swap around. Now I can start to look at the modems and start to eliminate this whole question about what can I do, what can I not do with my um, connections. First thing first, so I've got my Nokia fast mile up and running. It's not a great signal, so the Nokia fast mile was initially struggling, then I got a connection and when I did the actual test itself, as you can see, not bad actually. So it's 89, almost 90 down and 11.6 up. So it is a good connection. Um, I don't think it registered as 5G, it was a 4G connection, but it was good enough. Um, then of course we moved over to Telstra which is properly connected. Telstra, the, um, the, just the consumer solution, AW1000 is the model. 38 down, 35 up. No, it's at pretty average actually. It's um, for considering it's a 5G modem, and as you can see on the um, picture there, it shows that it's connected to the 5G network as well. That LED that says 5G is not showing when I tested it here at home, just here behind me. So it was actually connected to 5G, um, but this is the speed I got. Now I think that there is a lot of man management or shaping happening by the um, network operator by Telstra as well. So we are being capped to a certain speed because the capability is there but it's not being offered to us. F fortunately the SIM card that we use which is now the same SIM card that I swapped between the Nighthawk M6, the um, Telstra, uh, Tel Telstra, Teltonica RUT X50 and also the RUT950, the 4G modem, um, so it's the same SIM at the same time, at the same location. So there's a lot of um, commonality, so I'm basically trying to reduce the variables as much as possible. So on those three tests, I'm gonna end with a highlight at the last. So you can jump forward if you wanna see the RUT 950 results, the measurements and stuff. But Nighthawk M6, um, which had an error when I worked to try to do, use it here at home, inside. I've had to use the same device before outside when in the backyard and so, but inside it's having some troubles here, which is good because that shows comparison to the same location. Um, download 317, upload 12.7. So the night talk was happy. It was working really well. It was on a 5G connection, no troubles, no issues there at all. The 
Teltonica RT950, again, it's a 4G device. So I'm not comparing apples with apples in terms of all the devices I've looked at, but I have to be you know, mindful of just making sure I cover most bases. Um, 23 down, 28 up, which I think is pretty healthy. It's a good device. It's a good connection. It's solid. It's robust. And there's a lot of services that will work really reliably on that kind of speed. Then, of course, the um, highlight of my morning, which is why I uploaded another shorts was um, being quite excited about what's lying ahead for 2023 and beyond on this RUTX 50. So I got 359 down, 360 megabits down, and I had 73.5 up. Take into account, this is not the CBD of Sydney or Melbourne where the, like, the has on the bus happens. This is in what I call here low density suburbs. So there's not a lot of people. Um, so it's like the Telstra coverage is acceptable. The connection speed for what I get for something that's low density was phenomenal. So I'm pretty chuffed. This is the kind of scenario where you are a user or you go further out because that's where the caravan space, that's where the rural places are would be. This would be like high density for those kind of reference places. So this was to me pretty awesome. So let's see what else. Also important to note that I've learned my lesson in using Wi-Fi for these speed tests. So I've always made sure I'm connected to the 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi or the dual band Wi-Fi so that I don't have a, um, a bandwidth limit because of my Wi-Fi connection. Um, what else is it? Speed is the relative and I think this is just relative. So of course this is not absolute. I'm not saying, I'm not criticizing one or the other. The one thing I am criticizing is that, not criticizing, highlighting, is the benefit of external antennas is now important and it's going to get more important as we go further. So this is kind of to me a kind of a line in the sand to say, well, you know what, now I am talking because now we're talking. This is a 5G modem, has four 4G, four, four external antennas. Man, I'm messing up this video here. Um, external antennas and 4x4, Xbox 24, two Xbox 2s, MIMO 312s, whatever's coming. Um, it's just going to be awesome come, from here coming forward. Um, I think that's about it. I said everything I wanted to say. Um, RTX 50, it's coming, it's here, and look forward to Q, Q1 and Q2 when this product is starting to ship here in Australia and also globally as well. That's it. Thanks for watching. This is an intro to 2023. Let's have some fun this year. Thanks. Bye bye.